Thank you. Uh, thank you. The organ I'd like to thank the organizers for the invitation. It's, I've been here several times, and it's also always a, a pleasure to come back. So uh, I will talk about the optimization of Lyapunov exponents. And this talk is kind of un unusual because, it has, as you see, it has much more questions than than results, but uh, there are a few results. So, um, okay, so the, the just fix some extremely basic notation. Uh, so I work always with a dynamics T acting on a compact metric space, and these dynamics will be at least continuous. And we we'll work a lot with the space of invariant probability measures, which is a compact and convex um, set. Uh, topologize with the, the usual weak star topology and, and the subset of ergodic measures is, uh, as you know, is the set of extremal points of this com, uh, compact convex set. Okay, so, <coughs> so even if the, the, the main topic of the talk is optimization of Lyapunov exponents, I, I, I will spend some time talking about uh, what I call commutative ergodic optimization, which is the optimization of, uh, uh, of Birkhoff averages. And uh, if, you, if you want an introduction, introduction to this, this topic, you can look at these surveys by Oliver Jenkson, an uh, old one and a new one. <coughs> and then there you can find uh, most, uh, well, of the, no, 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 not the proofs, but uh, you have a, a list of most of results that are known in this field. So, okay, so wha what's the problem here? <coughs> you are given a function, usually called a potential or maybe, a, I don't know, performance function, something. And then you look at the integrals of this function. Uh, you integrate this function against invariant measures. Okay, so uh, I'm sorry. So the, 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 the dynamics here, l l let's think of this dynamics T fixed, right? So what I say in the beginning works for any continuous um, map on a compact space. <coughs> okay. So you integrate, you look all the possible values, and, and then what, what, what you get is an interval that depends on the function f, and therefore, <coughs> um, Let's see if I can use it. Oh. There. Uh, and so you, you have this beta, which we may call the maximum ergodic uh, average, and alpha, which is the minimum ergodic average. And in more geometric terms, you have, you, you have this uh, compact convex set of invariant measures. And essentially what we are doing is taking a one-dimensional projection of it, because the this integration is a, some a fine uh, operation, right? And so the is a, it, it's clear that some projection of your set, right? And, and, the, and then you get something which is also compact and convex in the line, therefore an integral. <coughs> Moreover, um, these extremes are all, always attained by e uh, extreme extremal points of your set which you recall that these are exactly the ergodic measures. So you can always, always find at least one ergodic measure that projects here to beta. Okay. So we, these, the, these measures that attain the maximum are called maximizing measures. And uh, what I'm saying here is to, you can also take a, an ergodic one. Mm -hmm. And if for some reason you know that the, the maximizing measure is unique, then it automatically is ergodic. Okay. <coughs> Uh, okay, so this was stated in terms of integrals and how you, you, you relate this with Birkhoff averages. Well, it's not difficult. You basically, need, if you know Birkhoff theorem, then it, it's kind of obvious. So uh, let, let me use this notation for the Birkhoff sums, right? So uh, <coughs> with, with respect to your dynamics T, right? And so these are the Birkhoff averages. Now, if you take some x and you make n go to infinity, 
well, maybe this x is not a typical point, so the limit doesn't exist, but then you take the link soup, and then you take the soup with respect to all the, the, all the points x, the initial conditions, and this gives you the same number beta that we saw in the previous slide. <coughs> the maximum ergodic average can also be defined in this more uh, elementary way. <coughs> And it's a nicer exercise to, to show that this thing can also be written in mm -hmm. that this other form. So here I <coughs> interchange the, the soup and the limb. And now it's uh, actually a limit because of subadditive. The sequence that you're putting here is sub uh, subadditive. Well, the sequence without the ends, of course. <coughs> okay, so it's, you have these alternative formulations in terms of Birkhoff averages. So this is called ergodic optimization of Birkhoff averages. So you want to find the points for which the, the orbit um, has this asymptotic average as big as possible, let's say. Okay, let's focus on the on maxim maximization because minimization is essentially the same problem here. So, okay, but uh, to, to uh, describe the orbits may be kind of messy, uh, so maybe the more convenient way of dealing with this is trying to describe the maximizing measures, okay? So let's say, let, let me call this the meta problem because it's extremely vague, and, but this is essentially the, the main problem in this, uh, in this uh, topic. <coughs> okay, so let, let, to give you some intuition, let's uh, start with some very general things. If you take, you fix any reasonable space of continuous functions, I, I will say in a moment what this means, but let, let's say this f is just a space of all continuous functions, and then generically the maximizing measure is unique, right? And in particular, ergodic, uh, as, as we have seen. Okay, so <coughs> some explanations. Uh, reasonable means that it contains the continuous functions and the continuous functions are dense there. And, uh, and generic, uh, pro I think this is a standard terminology, means that uh, uh, a generic set is the intersection of a countable family of open and dense sets. Okay, so something that, uh, like in Bayer's theorem, right? So we have, uh, so generically you have this uniqueness property, nice. Okay, now let, let's look at this inverse problem. So the, 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 the problem of ergodic optimization is given the function and the dynamics to the, find the maximizing measure. Huh? Yeah, but the inverse problem is given a measure, an ergodic measure, <laughs> can you find a, a continuous function for which this is uh, maximizing and moreover unique to make things non-trivial? And the answer is yes, this was proved by Jenkinson. Uh, maybe in the er early 2000s. Uh, look, uh, it's not as automatic as it seems, but you need some functional analysis. Okay. <coughs> so, for example, let's say take the doubling map. You can find some continuous function on the on the interval or on the circle for which, let's say, Lebesgue measure is the, the, the measure for which the integral is the, as big as possible. If you take another invariant measure, the, you have a smaller integral, right? Or you can take, well, okay, that's Lebesgue measure, but... Uh, <coughs> so, in, in, a, a question here, can you improve the regularity of this function? Of course, if your measure is very simple, it's supported on a finite orbit, you just... Uh, if it's supported on this orbit, I can take uh, something like that, right? Of if I have here a period two orbit, I can take a continuous function for which the maximizing measure is, the unique maximizing measure is exactly the measure supported on this pair of points. And this can be made uh, synfinity or whatever you want, right? But what, what, what if your measure here is something more complicated as the Lebesgue measure? Then it's not uh, so obvious what happens, right? <coughs> yeah. 
And, and the answer is, is that in general, if, if your measure here is more complicated, the, the function f cannot be too regular. So this, let's see why. Okay, so this, will, this, is, this claim will be a consequence of something else, right? So let's restrict our setting to get more interesting results. So let's work, this is like, let's call the nice setting where our dynamics is hyperbolic and the function is regular. So I don't want to be extremely precise here, but hyperbolic means, let's say, something uniformly expanding, right? So it's not, it's a endomorphism, perhaps, or a nose of diffio or axiom A, something like that. And regular means at least holder, but maybe you want to work with even better regularity. But, okay, so <coughs> in this nice setting, there is something called a maximizing set, which is an invariant compact <coughs> set, well, where all the maximizing measures live. So you, you, you can prove that there is an invariant set for which a measure is maximizing if and only if the support is contained there. Okay, in this trivial example, the maximizing set would be this periodic orbit. <coughs> okay, and... Sorry, this is given F. Given F, yes. Yes, given F and given T, you need. Okay, and now you see that, um, let, let, let's say the dynamics here is, for example, t, uh, 2x mod 1, right, in the circle. And re remember the previous theorem that says that any ergodic measure, for example, Lebesgue is uh, uniquely maximizing for some function. And now, as a consequence of this, you see that uh, if I take Lebesgue measure, the, this function cannot be holder. It will be continuous, but with a bad modulus of regularity. Because if it were holder, then you could apply this theorem and conclude that there is a compact set where the maximizing measures live, right? But the, the, the measure has full support. So in the end, we would, would conclude that all, all the measures were maximizing. And, the, and if you, let's... If you come back a little, the Jenkinson's theorem says that you, this f that he finds is uniquely maximizing. <coughs> the proof of this is some kind of um, Hambanek kind of argument. It's not very constructive. Right. So I, I consider this more interesting. Right. So. Okay, so we, by the previous theorem, as I said, this really requires this regularity because we know it's not true by C0, for C0 functions. And um, actually this thing is a corollary of a stronger result that I won't explain, right? It's something called sometimes Manier lemma or Jenkinson uh, calls it uh, the revelation lemma. It's, uh, well, uh, and there are several versions that were discovered independently and then later some several improvements replacing this, this uh, the class of hyperbolic maps that uh, are allowed. And, um, okay, but I won't enter in detail here. B basically, I just say that this Manier lemma is a version of the Leipzig theorem that you maybe know, where you replace equalities by inequalities. Okay, it turns out to be uh, something extremely useful in this in this field. <coughs> but I, I, I won't give much detail. Um, <coughs> okay, so let me state this conjecture or perhaps a meta conjecture because uh, it, it, it's something kind of flexible and if somebody comes with a counterexample I can say no that, that's not what I meant. Well this is this is my uh, statement but uh, I, it's basically a reformulation of something by Hunt and Ott, right? Uh, in a physics journal, 96. They, so they say, suppose T is chaotic, and they, they don't explain, they give a few examples, but uh, well, well, let, let, let's read with the gaps and then we fill the gaps, right? Uh, suppose T is chaotic, then for typical regular functions F, the maximizing measure has low complexity. 
Okay, so what this means? <coughs> uh, well, chaotic, uh, uh, I think everybody agrees that these uniformly hyperbolic maps or uniformly expanding are uh, examples of chaos. Okay, but let, let's think of something hyperbolic. And now, typical, uh, well, we've seen the, uh, a theorem uh, where there was something, some property that holds for generic functions. So this <coughs> is typicality in a topological sense. But you can also try to formulate a probabilistic sense of typicality that something has um, full probability, right? Regular, uh, as I said before, it's at least holder, but maybe you can get better theorems if you put more regularity. And low complexity, this is also has some several possibilities. <coughs> it's a, at least zero topological entropy. But uh, if you are more ambitious, and, and, and this is the way they wrote the conjecture, they, they said that typically the maximizing measure sh should be supported on a periodic orbit. Okay, like this example. So typically, you sh shouldn't be too distinct for, from that. <coughs> Okay. Okay, so there's the conjecture again. And there are several results that I don't have time to to, re to explain the history and then this just jump to the best result we are, we have by Gonzalo Contreras who proved that if your dynamics is uniformly expanding then for generic uh, topologically generic Lipschitz functions the maximizing measure is supported on a periodic orbit. So it's a very nice result. And uh, uh, actually, the generic here I I is also open. So it's an open and dense set. It's something uh, very uh, strong. <coughs> but it, it doesn't say, I, I think the original conjecture had the, the spirit that the typicality was meant in a topological sense. So we still we can, could hope to obtain a topological version of this result. <coughs> and uh, I tried to do that with uh, Yu Wei Zhang and we, we proved a, a, a probabilistic version of this, but we needed to work with a special, with the, 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 the shift and with a mo much more restricted class of, of functions. So we still have an infinite dimensional space where we can prove a probabilistic notion of, uh, uh, we can prove that typically in a probabilistic sense, you have this kind of conclusion, but this, this space of functions that we are working with, th they have a very strong modulus of continuity, much, uh, much more than Holder or Lipschitz. So it's not, uh, as good as w we wanted, <coughs> but it, there is something to be done here. Okay, and, and to make things more concrete, let's look at this nice example that was discovered several times. And in, in some sense, it is like the simple, simplest example you can think of, right? Uh, so the dynamics is, two a is the doubling map. It, uh, here it's convenient to take 2x mod 2 pi. And then I consider my functions will be trigonometric polynomials of degrees one. So linear combinations of uh, constant sine and cosine. Of course, the, the, the constant doesn't <coughs> contribute too much to the complexity. So we essentially, you can work with this one dimensional family of functions, just the cosine. And then you, you shift the compose with a translation. And then what happens? <coughs> This was proved by Thierry Bush uh, <coughs> that for every choice of this parameter theta, your, your the, the, this function, this cosine function, has a unique maximizing measure, right? So it's for every parameter. It's very, very strong. And this maximizing measure, it always has zero entropy. It, actually, it, 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 it has a, a very precise description, something called a Sturmian measure, <coughs> and uh, well, these Sturmian measures they include some periodic measures, not not uh, measures supported on periodic orbits, not all of them, so, some some specific ones, 
And, and what happens if you take theta randomly, so let's say for Lebesgue almost every theta, this measure will be supported on a periodic orbit. Okay, and, and it, as I said, it's not any periodic orbit. It has some restrictions. <coughs> it must be stern. And it, it's even stronger than that. The, the, the set of bad thetas for which this measure is not periodic, it has zero Hausdorff dimension. So it's an extremely thin set where you, you don't have this periodicity. <coughs> okay. Uh, well, this is something else. You, if you like, uh, I don't know, thermodynamical formalism you, or multifractal analysis, you can think, uh, try to maxim play with a different kind of problem of maximizing, let's say, the entropy of the measure given the average. So where this T, of course, must be in the set of possible averages, which was this interval that we saw in the beginning. So you should obtain some function. Well, so by the con previous conjectures, typically this, this function should have zero at the extremes, right? Corresponding to zero entropy. And then this, uh, under some hypothesis, this will be a nice uh, concave graph. Okay, but it, uh, maybe I'll let's, no, no, uh, I, I, want to, I don't want to, to enter too much in this, this, form, this kind of problems. <coughs> okay, and now let's say something about the Lyapunov exponent. So let, I, I will begin with the top Lyapunov exponent. So <coughs> we still have our dynamics t, and now you replace your function f, this your real function, by a, a matrix function. Uh, it's this capital F. Okay, so we, let's say it's, uh, these are d by d ma matrices. Uh, it's usually more convenient to, to work with invertible matrices. Mm -hmm. And for some, some complicated reason, this is called a cocycle. No, or maybe the pair, the T and the, and the F, this is called a cocycle. And then, uh, instead of summing, you, you, you're not going to sum the matrices, or because it won't be too, too interesting, it's more interesting to multiply the matrices. And then it, and it's more convenient to multiply them in this order. Okay, so this will replace the Birkhoff sums. You have these products. And the Lyapunov or the, the top Lyapunov exponent says something about the growth of this product. So <coughs> let, let's take the norm of the matrix, right? And then th this norm typically uh, has uh, exponential behavior. And the rate you, that you obtain is this lambda 1. So lambda 1 is defined as, as this limit if it exists. And, and as a consequence of uh, the subadditive ergodic theorem, the, for any invariant measure, the, the, the limit really exists for almost every point with respect to this measure. And then, um, <coughs> ah, we are, we are working with continuous functions, and then our space is compact, right? And so in particular, these things are uniformly bounded, and you can integrate. Well, this will be measurable, and uh, let, let's look instead this this number, which is an uh, integrated or average Lyapunov exponent. <coughs> okay, so this is the number that we are going to focus on, and then you, as before, you can try to maximize or minimize it. So, you, using a, a, a notation similar similar to what we used before. Let's call the minimum or the infimum alpha and the maximum beta, the supremum beta. Okay, but now you have the uh, question, I, I, is this really a maximum or is this a minimum or are, are this infant super, are they attained? Uh, oh, uh, well, let's, let's leave this for the next slide. Just, uh, the, 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 the this kind of thing ha has been studied before. Actually, it w first appeared a long time ago, 1960, in, in a, a more restricted situation, and it was called the joint spectral radius by uh, Rota and Strength. And then in the 90s, lots of people started to, 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 to study this thing again because of some applications to wavelets and uh, there are lots of engineering papers that, uh, where you can find this thing. 
And there, in, in, the, in, the, in the order of quantity, or, or if you take the exponential of it, it's going to joint spectral subradius. <coughs> okay, so you, this is in a more restricted situation called the step cost cycles that we will see later. Okay, but, right, so comparing to what we had before, the basic, the most basic difficulty is that the, the function we are considering uh, re remember that uh, before we are just considering the integrals, where are these nice affine functions, and now the Lyapunov exponent is not even continuous as a function of the measure. It's only upper semi-continuous <coughs> in general. So what hap So using the upper semi-continuity, you can prove that the soup here is attained, but the 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 infimum not necessarily attained. Okay, so with the, 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 of course you lose the symmetry that you have before, it's, uh, the, so the supremum has a very different behavior, right? Uh, and actually we'll focus more on this beta because it's better behaved. And, but le let me show you quickly an example where this infimum is not attained. I think this is interesting to, this example is interesting because it shows some uh, kind some pathologies that uh, may appear. So, in, in my example, the dynamics is the the two shift, the one sided shift on, on, on symbol zero and one. And in, in in my matrix function is okay. So here you have the your Cantor set where the shift acts. And and okay. <coughs> this is, uh, the, the, my function a is locally constant. All right. It's, it has some some value on this cylinder and has another value on this cylinder. These values are matrices, but I'm drawing them like that, right? And so it only depends. Oh, sorry, this. Uh, so the, the, so your matrix function only depends on the on the symbol on the zero position. So that's why I wrote like that. Right? So. It, and the, and the pair of matrices that we choose are exactly these, right. Right. these two matrices. One of them is, you see that is a hyperbolic matrix and the other is a rotation by 90 degrees, okay? And if you have any experience in multiplying matrices, you, you know that to, to, to multiply a hyperbolic by a rotation is a nasty thing, to, right? You can get into trouble. <coughs> Okay, so let, let's see that in this example, the, the infimum of the Lyapunov exponent is not attained. Uh, actually, the infimum is given by this value. And this is, uh, this is not difficult. If you look, look this sequence of measures. So, okay, so this means, uh, this means the following. This is a, a sequence of symbols where we have n repetitions of symbol zero, then we have a single one, and then, and then you repeat this periodically, right? So this is just a, a measure supported on a periodic orbit and it's easy to calculate, to, to compute the Lyapunov exponent because it's <coughs> one over the period times the log of the big, uh, biggest uh, eigenvalue or, or the norm of the biggest eigenvalue. If then you compute the product. Actually, this matrix has no real eigenvalue. So another way of computing, the, uh, maybe there is a mistake here. Uh, maybe I, divide, I forgot to divide it by two. <coughs> yeah, but anyway, I think the conclusion is correct. So the, this, this is what you get in the end. And you see that it's something that is approaching log two, right, by above. Essentially, <coughs> we, we, the, this, this matrix had, uh, previously it had, uh, or any power of, of this, this has real eigenvalues, but then you multiply by this rotation, and then now the eigenvalues are, are non-real, are complex, right? But then there is a price because this has the terminant less than one and this has the terminant one. So this, this guy slightly <coughs> pushes a, a little the, the, the Lyapunov exponent. That's the trick, right? So it's not exactly, as it, so in, in the end you, you get these numbers approaching log two. Ah, and thi this, is, this, uh, I, uh, this example is nice because it also showed the, what, I, what I mentioned before, this discontinuity, all right? These measures are converging to the measure supported on the fixed point, but on, on the fixed point consisting of only zeros, right? 
And here the, the, the top Lyapunov exponents plus log 2. But these measures have a Lyapunov exponents that converge to minus log 2. So we have a discontinuity of the Lyapunov exponent with respect to, to the measure. Uh, yes. Okay, but uh, yeah, so the, the, the same example already uh, also illustrates something else. And, and now to conclude the proof, so, so we have seen that uh, here's minus log 2, and we found some measures for which the Lyapunov exponents are approaching minus <coughs> log 2 from above. So this, this shows that your alpha, the, the minimum Lyapunov, the infimum of possible Lyapunov exponents is at most minus log 2. So let in, so in the converse direction, what you do, you can, you can bound by below the Lyapunov exponent by uh, the top Lyapunov exponent by the average of the first two Lyapunov exponents. Well, I haven't explained what the second Lyapunov exponent is, but uh, the, the, this quantity can be written as that, half the average of the log of the determinant. And this is, the, as I said, the determinant here is one, the determinant here is what, one fourth, right? So this is always bigger than one fourth, and then you get this bound for the Lyapunov exponent, right? And now, uh, this inequality is always uh, is strict unless this function is constant equal, equal to one fourth. But this is only happens if you are in the periodic point here. But in that case, your, your Lyapunov exponent is plus log two. So uh, if this inequality I is not, a st I I uh, uh, one of the uh, equalities will be strict. So you, do, you never have equality. Okay, so that's the end of the proof. Okay. You know, no, no measure can attain this value. Okay. So let's focus on the, on the beta, right? Let's maximize the Lyapunov exponents and let's forget about this problem for the moment. And now let's formulate another meta, meta conjecture, which is essentially the, what we had before, but now uh, the, the, the co-cycle version, right? Suppose your T is chaotic in any of these senses, then typically in any of these senses, regular co-cycles, meaning at least holder, well, the conjecture is that the maximizing measures should have low complexity. In low complexity, the Weakest version of the conjecture would be that they have zero topological entropy, and the strongest version of the conjecture would be that they are supported on a periodic orbit. But maybe you can, I don't know, who knows, you can maybe in some specific situation can get something more precise. And, and, and uh, there is a result that fits in this uh, philosophy, but I won't give you much details. Uh, by Michel Ranz and myself. Okay. Ah, and 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 now, <coughs> you, you remember I mentioned this subordination principle before, right? That there there was this in the commutative situation there was this set where the maximizing measures live, and now and then we have a, a version of this re, this basic result for cycles. So, a, as the previous, and this this was called subordination principle. So, as in the classical subordination principle, you need to assume that uh, your dynamics is, is hyperbolic, and that, uh, um, okay, and now let's work with uh, what, what's called a fiber bunched cycle. I, I want to find this, but uh, <coughs> it's a, at least holder cycle, <coughs> and moreover, it cannot be too big in some sense, or it cannot. Mm, Um, it, 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 it's a, this fiber bunching condition is a, a kind of partial, uh, of partially hyperbolic condition for some projective dynamics. But uh, I won't define this. Uh, but this kind of cost cycles here, they, they, these, they are locally constant on cylinders. They always satisfy this fiber bunching condition because you can tweak the, the constants that appear there. And so this includes the, this, uh, this easier setting. Okay. 
And what's the conclusion? It, 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 that you have this maximizing set. You have a compact invariant set such that uh, a measure is maximizing for the Lyapunov exponent if and only if the support is there. Okay. Ah, yeah. ah and then there is this word here. Well, okay, so the we, uh, the, 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 actually we prove if the dimension is two, then we have exactly this kind of statement is the dimension is bigger than two. Then we need uh, actually a stronger version of fiber bunching, but then in, uh, as the, this paper was completed and I sent it to a few people, and then Clark Butler realized that he can uh, improve a technical part of the, the proof and remove this strong bunching condition. So that's, that's why this, using the, this suggestion by Clark Bl Butler, we can remove this, but uh, this is not written yet. <coughs> Ah, and, 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 and actually, as I said, as before, thi this comes from some, these subordination principles come from something else, which is a version of this uh, Manier lemma for cocycles. Okay. Ah, and I should mention here some works by Ian Morris, uh, probably was the first of, uh, of uh, the first people to consider maximizing sets in this kind of setting. Uh, well, not exactly the same uh, setting, more restricted than ours, but uh, yeah, so we also improve some results of Ian Morris. Okay. Right. Yeah, so, and, and now let's do the following. Let's look at the, the other Lyapunov exponents. I mentioned that are <coughs> right, we were talking about the top Lyapunov exponents, but now let's see the, uh, all the Lyapunov exponents. So, sorry. Yes. Uh, in, in that example, the example. Yes. So the state will go to the unstable by the rotation. Yes. Do you have some kind of transversality condition? I don't know, I don't remember. Uh, they use this all the time, but the unstable by, I don't know, mean for all the stable. Do, do you have some lambda one situation? You have one? No, so saying that. That particular example has a particular situation that the unstable will go to the stable. Yes. So you have some kind of transversality situation. Uh, it's not a hyperbolic cycle. Yes. Um, would you say that? All yeah, well, uh, I, I believe that th 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 this is far from being typical, but. Uh, uh, I don't. I don't know if I. I've wrote too many conjectures already. <laughs> 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 and yeah, but maybe uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I don't know. Typically, this doesn't happen, or maybe you can find some explicit condition that improve that uh, <coughs> you don't have this kind of phenomenon. And why the hyperbolicity or whatever? What is the main point of the hyperbolicity? All the kind of condition. What is the main the hyper the hyperbolicity of the hyperbolicity on P. What is the well, I, 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 for for this kind of game to be interesting, you need to work with a dynamics that l has lots of invariant measures. So the oh, but you have so many uh, dynamics. Yeah, but the of yes, yeah, so uh, but the the thing is, yeah. this kind of stuff is already very difficult for the to x mod one. So Maybe in the future we'll be able to work okay, with more I'm complicated I'm dynamics, but... Uh, on the in the proof, what is used? Ah, w proof of what? So, sorry. Of all those results. Ah, yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, or any of those results that you mentioned. <laughs> this, okay, so the, okay, so this one, here you have this fiber bunching, and, and uh, as most, most results on that uh, uh, work with fiber bunching, they use a lot these holonomies, which no, no, some no, kind no, of... No, so you mentioned, in all this theorem, even in the first part, you were using that T is hyperbolic on your morphism. Yes, yes. So what is the main ingredient of the hyperbolicity that is used to prove all this type of theorem? Um, uh, 
Well, as I, as I said, there is this basic uh, thing called Manier Lema, which is a kind of, um, is a version of uh, Leipzig theorem, right? And Leipzig theorem, I d think it doesn't make any sense without uh, hyperbolism. Uh, well, if you inspect the proof, some you are al always using hyperbolism. Mm. I don't know if I can I come up with a counterexample to show you that hyperbolism is important. But yeah, well, I'm sorry. <coughs> Let me go on. In, this, in the previous results, do you know something about the entropy of the maximizing measure? Wh 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 which ones? In this, these results. Ah, no, yeah, uh, no, no. I, they, they, this is, there are not, um, there are many problems here and few answers. So the, the, this result is, is, is like uh, we, we look at for the most basic tool we have in this field, which is this Manier lemma, and we try to generalize this. And then we hope that using this kind of results, then later we will be able to prove more precise description. So we started from this technical thing, but <coughs> as in uh, um, Gonzalo's theorem, the first thing he does is, well, let's, he starts with Manier lemma is the, the, the starting point of, of, of these considerations. Are you going to rebuild the revelation lemma? <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry, I don't have time. <coughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I still I still have a lot lots of Okay, let, let, let's go to the 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 the, the other Lyapunov exponent. Okay, so wha what you do is the following. You just, uh, instead of taking the norm, now we take the singular values, right? So what's the singular value? <coughs> what are the singular values? If you have um, a matrix A, you apply the, you, you take the image of the unit ball, which is an ellipsoid, and these singular values are uh, half the axis of the, your ellipsoid. So the, the, the first one, the biggest one, is, is the norm, okay? And, and then you have the others. <coughs> ah, and, and, and then, okay, so you do the same thing and then you obtain some numbers that are, are called the, the Lyapunov exponents, okay? These are ordered in a, a decreasing way, so you obtain the sequence of numbers and you, and you can prove that the, as before these limits exist for almost every point with respect to any invariant measure, probability measure, right? And, and if your measure is ergodic, then these numbers will be constant. <coughs> so, yes, so, so let's work with this sequence of numbers with respect to the ergodic measures. So I, I don't want to, to work with the non-ergodic measures because it's funny to make averages of things if, of the second Lyapunov exponent if the measure is not ergodic, right? So let's work with ergodic measures instead because the, anyway the number, the, these limits that we'll see here for ergodic measures are all the possible numbers that you can see mm, on a set of po full probability. Okay, so I, let's call this the Lyapunov vector of your ergodic measure. And then let's look to this set, the Lyapunov spectrum, which is just a set of vectors that you obtain. So the for obvious remark is that this is contained, the, the, these, these numbers are ordered so they satisfy this kind of inequalities. And so they are, this uh, Lyapunov spectrum is contained in this set, the, and the, which I call the positive chamber. Not, not, I don't know if that's standard terminology or not, but so for example, if you have, uh, what's that, the, the dimension two, right? Then you, you the, the each vector is a point in R2, Right, and then you have something here, which is yeah. beline, uh, b below this line. <coughs> okay, it's called a wall. Well, maybe it touches the wall, we don't know. And the quantities we have, uh, we were considering before, the maximum Lyapunov exponent and the minimum uh, uh, top Lyapunov exponent. Okay, so the, when if you just look the first Lyapunov exponent, then this is the maximum point, this is the minimum. 
All right? And um, another, maybe this is a nicer situation. If, for example, your matrices are in SL3R, meaning 3 by 3 with the terminant 1, then the sum of the exponents will be 0. And then, you, well, you can work instead with this, restrict yourself to this two-dimensional space, and then the chamber becomes this uh, wedge, this cone here. Right, and so we'll have some subset of the chamber that may, be, may touch the walls or not. Uh, I should mention that uh, um, uh, CERT has uh, defined something called joint spectrum, uh, slightly is a different situation, but the, 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 this joint spectrum is related to this thing. <coughs> And, and he did this in general league groups and has some very nice large deviation results. But you can, if you're interested, you can check his paper. Uh, ah, let me just mention, the, since there are very few results, let's put this uh, nice result here that says that the, the, the periodic orbits or the measure supported on, on periodic orbits, they will feel a dense set here of your Lyapunov spectrum. This, if, if you are in the usual nice uh, setting where the dynamics is hyperbolic and the cycle is holder continuous. So it, it can always approx approximate it by, um, by uh, the, you can always approximate the Lyapunov exponents by um, using measures supported on periodic orbits. Okay. And now, as always, let's formulate a meta conjecture. Okay, so let's put the, 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 the nice setting again. And then typically what we should expect. Well, so the, the, this set, uh, actually, in, in principle, we don't know much about this set, but it, it should be a convex set. The boundary is fishy, and this uh, I'll explain later. Right, it's a, some strange boundary. Right, and so it want to be these round disks and these blobs in the previous picture. And... Uh, <coughs> The, the boundary points outside the walls, they should be at attained as Lyapunov vectors of e each boundary point attained by a unique measure. And this measure should have low <coughs> complexity. And now low complexity means uh, zero topological entropy. We, can, we can't uh, hope for, if you have this situation, right, you have here your spectrum. You can't wait for all, uh, you can't hope for all these points to be, to correspond to periodic orbits because there are countably many of them, all right? But they should have uh, zero entropy. What else? <coughs> ah, and uh, again, the subordination principle, uh, e e e each of these measures is characterized by, by, by its support. So, in particular, this support should be uniquely ergodic. Okay, so uh, I, I will skip this. This is about uh, some multifractal thing, but uh, it's not uh, important. Um, well, so I have at least one example where this philosophy holds. It's again a one step co cycle, so th this kind of locally constant co cycles over, over the shift. Now, with two other pair of matrices. And if you take exactly these two matrices, what you see is this picture. So the, 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 these are the Lyapunov exponents, right? And the boundary is this curve. <coughs> well, there, there is a part of the boundary that touches the wall, right? And, and then you have this curve. Uh, and OK, so what happens is the, this curve, it looks like a, well, maybe the picture is, is difficult to see, but you can guess that this is a, you can see a kind of vertex here, maybe this is a polygon, but actually it's not. It has, this is indeed a vertex, so you can find a cone there, you can fit your, your set inside some cone with origin in this point, so this is called a corner, but there are corners everywhere. There is a dense subset of corners, and so th this is what's called uh, fishing, right? Ah, and moreover, e each point here is attained by a, a unique, is the Lyapunov spectrum of a unique ergodic measure, which is a in particular has zero entropy. 
Well, <coughs> it, it, oh, oh, this statement is a uh, easy corollary of, of um, a study done by these guys. They were not exactly interested in, in, in this set. They worked with something else, but it, you can um, reinterpret the, the results and, and get to this conclusion. Okay, so we have at least one example where this uh, philosophy, this meta-conjecture, sorry, this one makes sense, right? So, in the example, yes. why the two? Because you have a, a zero is just a year, the other one, but one is have the two. Um, yes, because if, uh, if it were ones, then then the then you have determinant one, and so the sum of the Lyapunov exponents would be zero, and then you would uh, your set would be inside a line, so it wouldn't be very interesting. So the, the, the it's like in the previous example, the determinant plays a role here. That's basically because we the, your group of matrices is too small. Maybe you can reproduce this kind of trick in SL three R. <coughs> Okay, so I have very, uh, have five minutes. Okay, so uh, <coughs> Let, let's consider the following particular situation where your matrices are strictly positive, right? Most of you, well, this is, uh, Ricardo Manier is here, so most of you must know what a dominated splitting is. So actually what I need is a dominated splitting. Right? So if your cycle has a dominated splitting, in, let, in this case in one dimensional bundles, then, then your problem becomes m m much more uh, treatable because the, the, now the Lyapunov exponents are just integrals of the expansion rates along these bundles. Right? And so all, all these complications of the, the Lyapunov exponent not being continuous, etc., they disappear. So the, now the Lyapunov exponent is continuous, and the Lyapunov spectrum is just the set of these integrals, <coughs> integrals of these um, vector valued functions, it's something called a rotation set. And by domination, this set is also away from the wall. So in, in this case, it's very well behaved. And then the, your spectrum will be something convex, etc. Right? Ah, as I, I actually, what the important work, word here is dominated splitting. Right? So, uh, so in, at this moment, we realize that we missed something. We should have, before dealing with this complicated, uh, this complicated problem about the Lyapunov exponents, we should have worked with uh, the, uh, the, this kind of thing, right? The rotation sets, the sets that you obtain by integrating a vector valued function. Right, so I don't have much time, but I, here I define this thing. And there is a, a basic ex example that's called the fish, where you have the doubling map. And, and, and let's say in the, here is easier to work with the unit uh, circle. In the, and and your, your function f is just identity, where you identi <coughs> identify the complex and the reals. And then you get some set that w was first studied by Oliver Jenkinson in his thesis, and these are some points in the boundary of the set. So, the, yeah, and, and later it was proved by <coughs> Thierry Bush that the, indeed this thing has a dense set of corners. It's not a polygon, <coughs> okay? And, 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 and he called this the fish, you know, because this, there is a trick with words in this, in this statement. This is the title of the paper, the Poisson à Padarin, okay? And uh, well, we can formulate a meta conjecture for this kind of things, but uh, let me, by lack of time, let's go back to cos cycles quickly. So, uh, as I said, it's nice when you have a dominated splitting, the situation becomes simpler. So, the definition of dominated splitting you have two bundles and that are invariant under the action of, co of the cos cycle, and the expansion of one bundle is less than a constant, less than one times the, ex the expansion you see on the other. And in this case, it means that the Lyapunov spectrum is away from a certain wall, right? Because there is a bundle where the least expansion that you see in the first bundle cannot approach the, 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 the strongest uh, 
uh, expansion you see on the other. So there is a gap between the Lyapunov exponents. The converse is not true, but maybe, it's, well, it's true under some assumptions and maybe it's true for typical cycles. Okay. So, uh, yes. Uh, okay. If you are very lucky to have a dominated splitting into one-dimensional bundles, then you, then, then you get a, a very nice situation where this LF is automatically convex, compact, etc. And maybe you can prove the convexity of this guy reducing to some sub subsistence that where you have this simple dominated splitting, but it's far from being trivial that you can do that. And so let me conclude. Uh, uh, I have a couple of slides. Uh, let, let's, uh, I, I had this meta conjecture. This is the, was the same as I explained before. And let's uh, add an extra, an extra uh, inf piece of information. Okay, so, <coughs> so we expect that the lump, this set to touch a wall if and only if there is no dominated splitting. So typically if you hit, see this kind of picture, the, the, the set is away from the walls, then the reason for that is that there is a dominated splitting here preventing <coughs> the first two Lyapunov exponents to get together and another dominated splitting there, right? Well, but this is a conjecture. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, there is something else. Furthermore, if you touch, the, if you touch a wall, then uh, here. Uh, yeah. So if it touches a wall, if and only if it has no dominated splitting of the corresponding dimensions, and moreover, there is a larger convex set called the Morse set. Uh, so if, there, if it touches a wall, let's say it's touching the wall. So there is a bigger, an extension of the set, right? A larger convex set called this M plus F, whose intersection with the chamber is the set you had before. And this new set is invariant under reflections. Let's see a picture. So this is not, so you, you, should, you shouldn't see this kind of thing because if you reflect, you get something that is not convex. So we should maybe this, okay? Or if, you, your, if your group is more interesting, then you have, and it touches several walls, then it must be invariant under the vial group and so you get some funny blob like that. Okay, and the philosophy, why you should expect this to be true? Basically because if you, if you, if there is a dominated, there is some lack of domination, then the, you must be able to mix the Lyapunov exponents in some way, and the way that this translates to the geometry of the set of Lyapunov exponents is that you get this kind of symmetry. And, and, and this terminology, more set, comes from, com there is also some relation with control theory, and that's where the terminology comes from. That's it, thank you. Yes, there, there, there is some, mm, there is some semi-continuity, yeah, ah, but it's kind of tricky. There is this funny situation where, rem, let, let me go back a little, uh, or maybe a lot, here. Huh? So we remember that I, 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 I told you that this point is always attained, but this one is not. So there is a tricky thing. This is attained, and so something here persists. So you have some kind of semi-continuity from this, from this vertex, but not from the other. And actually, there is a precise semi-continuity statement, but then you need to take it in a, into account the geometry of uh, this group of reflections. So if you, if, if you make the reflections and take some convex hole, then you obtain something that varies semi-continuously and we, when you change your cycle. And uh, I don't know if this helps to answer your question. <coughs> uh, 
So if the cosine was dominated, both are attained. Yeah, if the if the if you have a dominated yeah. splitting, the, then everything is very nice because the dominated splitting persists. And yeah. Should be something. There, there should be some subsystems where with domination, and this should give you some robustness. Yeah. But typically, but that, that's a part of con yes, that's part of the philosophy. Other so doesn't make any sense to try to optimize just the second definite of exponent. Uh, you you mean to to? But instead of looking at the pair, let's look at the second exponent or the third. I mean. Ah, the second. Just fix something. <coughs> yeah, the y the, then then you c you can get in you can go into the same kind of trouble again. If you maybe this point is not attained. But generically, it should be attained, right? Yes. Well. Uh, uh, I, I can tell you something precise here. If you in, in this uh, in, in this situation, right? If you have, uh, let's say the, the spectrum is a blob like that, huh? and then you, you take the reflection across the wall, and now and now you take the convex hull, so you get this kind of uh, stadium, and then the, this part of the these extre extremal points here will be attained. So this part will be attained, but this one you don't know. So let's put like this. Okay. So your question was to optimize, to, or let's say to maximize lambda two. Well, in this in this picture, maybe you don't have a maximizing measure for lambda two. Right. So, but uh, there are some other combi linear combinations of lambda one and lambda two for which you have. Uh, the, the, that are attained, but this depends on the geometry of, of the thing. <coughs>